Welcome back to the Sunday fast break. Andy Olson joined by former Illini great Corey Bradford with us on this Sunday to break down the past few weeks of Illinois basketball and Corey. They have been an eventful past few weeks without Kofi for a few games. Andre comes back and then he's out again. Let's start first with the most recent game, Northwestern, a, a game where it looked like Illinois was going to have some troubles and they come back in the end. It ends up being a quality win as they get to the halfway point of the Big Ten season. Exactly. That was, you know, it's it's always big to win on the road in the Big Ten. It doesn't matter if you're the number one team or the last place team. It's always going to be a dog fight. And like I always say, we'll take an ugly win over a pretty loss. Kofi Coburn back with the Illini now after missing two games with concussion protocols. Illinois did right. win one of those games, a big win against a top 10 Michigan State team. They lose at Maryland. What did you gather and what do you take from what the team was able to do in that Michigan State win without Andre Curbelo, without Kofi Coburn, and really just gritted their way to a one-point victory over the Spartans? Exactly. You know, and you always want to protect home court. And, um, and you know, it's always going to be a dog fight when Izzo bring Michigan State in there. And, um, and I think the guys responded well. The next guy stepped up. Um, it was a, 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 a team win. I think the coaching staff did a great job of making adjustments without playing with Kofi or Cabello. So um, so hats off to the guys, especially those super seniors who's always leaders and stepping up and, and just making a big leadership and guys are following. And you mentioned the super seniors, the freshmen on this team having some big performances as well. Luke Goody had nine points mm -hmm. against Michigan State. Goody. Brandon Pajimski and RJ Melendez had good games against Northwestern. How important is that getting those guys involved at this point in the season where, you know, they're having their freshman moments and they're getting that experience at the college level? Because so far this season, they haven't had a lot of it. And is that going to pay dividends later in uh, in, in this season Absolutely. and in, in the postseason possibly? Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's hats off to those young guys because they were ready. You know, they don't get much playing time. And if they do, it's, it's just for short stints. But they did a great job responding. They stepped in when they were needed. They were focused. They stuck to the game plan. They fed off the leadership from the from the older guys and just, just went out there and played loose. And it all pays off. And you, and you need that. You need that from each guy on the team. I think depth probably for me is the key word and what we learned right. about this Illinois team over the past two weeks with those freshmen stepping up with Kofi being out Andre being out Trent having an yes. off game against Northwestern I know his his defense is always consistent we don't have to worry about right. that but when you have a team like this with that kind of depth what does that mean for you know their prospects for the rest of the season and possibly making deep runs in the tournament Corey well, I always say the most important thing when it comes to tournament time is being healthy and matchups. And that's one thing that our team is, is we're, we're very tough to match up against. But when we're healthy, we're very dangerous. And it's, um, and, and it's it, it, you know, it's been a frustrating season for us because we haven't had a full team. It's always something, you know, I think we have Cabello for eight conference games. And obviously we missed two games with Kofi. So I think once we get everyone together, then hopefully they can gel and get the chemistry flowing at the right time, right before tournament starts. What's funny is the team really hasn't all played together yet this season because Andre Curbelo exactly. out after the first few games. When he comes back, he then gets put in the health and safety protocols. And <laughs> it, it may be this upcoming week that the team gets to play together for the first time. But even through all that, Corey, eight and two start to the Big Ten. Right. You're in first place tie with Wisconsin. You have a first place matchup coming with the Badgers this upcoming week. What do you make of that? Would, would you have expected that knowing, you know, all of the things they'd have to fight through so far this season with the injuries, the COVID, the suspensions, right. that they'd be in this position to top the Big Ten at this point. No, no one would have guessed this. And it just says a lot about our team. You know, guys stepping up, making plays, and they just winning by any means. And that's the most important thing. Being 8-2 right now in the Big Ten with everything the team has been through so far, you would think things wouldn't get worse. So let's cross our fingers and hope not. <laughs> and just, uh, I mean, these guys just take it one game at a time, but I think they'll be okay. Once everyone gets a full swing and have practice, you know, getting the, the chemistry going and getting the flow and creating a rhythm, because that's what it's all about when it comes down to the end. You mentioned the matchups, and that's something that I, I want to talk about in the Big Ten right. as well. We saw against Purdue uh, earlier last week uh, that Illinois played them close into double OT. That was a really fun <laughs> game. I, as a neutral watching that, I didn't want that game to end because it was so fun to watch. But right. what, what do you make of at this team full strength? Where do you think they kind of rank with the other teams? And maybe who gives them the most issues? Because I know Wisconsin has had 
a great start to their season. Of course, Purdue is going to be always dangerous with their two big guys inside. Just at full strength, where is this Illinois team, do you think, in conference as far as matchup wise? Exactly where they are right now, number one. If we're number one right now with a team with full swing, uh, completely healthy, all together, we'll be tough to beat. And, you know, right now we have a target on our back, and I think when we have the team full speed, that target is going to get even bigger. Um, and, and, and obviously the Big Ten, what can you say about it? You know, it's just – no team has really been dominant so far, you know what I mean? And you can only hope that, you know, when you, when you play on the road, you know, obviously you can't have a bad day on the road. And if you do have a bad day, let's just hope that home team have a worse day. And sometimes that's not even good enough. <laughs> Absolutely. So I, I, I think the guys are actually doing a really good job responding. Like I said, you have to get credit to the coaching staff because they really do a great job getting these kids prepared. And the kids themselves, the players, they are doing a great job in, in terms of comprehending everything and, 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 and utilizing that game plan that's put together and putting it out there on the floor on the offensive, defensive end. And that's why we're number one in the, in the 10 right now. One of the big topics of conversation this week, and Brad Underwood made sure it was a big topic of conversation, was Trent Frazier not being listed among the finalists for the Naismith Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, Brad Underwood called the, the people on that committee uh, – I don't know if he, stupid was the term that he used, but he's definitely questioned their intel, basketball intelligence. Corey, what do you make of Trent not being on that list and then going out and having the performance that he did against Northwestern and holding Boo Booey to just nine points? Well, it's not April, so it's not April Fools, because I was like, is this a joke? <laughs> you know, I was like, this this can't be. No way, no way they, did, they kept them off that. So, again, you know, it's just you never know what you're going to get from these committees. They're surprising. I mean, if it... If he was the one that was going to get yanked off, I'm sure it was another kid in another conference that was a pretty good defender that's going to get taken off as well. So um, if we wouldn't be having this conversation, I'm sure some other uh, fan base would be having the same conversation regarding their player and stuff. So, uh, I mean, it, you you hate to, to kind of just brush it off, but he's well deserving to be on that list right now. And, and I'm sure everybody, everybody in the Big Ten will agree. As a player, when you get – left off a, a list like that, does that fuel you to, to want to go prove them wrong? And especially a guy like Trent who takes his defense so seriously. Well, look, I'm going to put my money on the table and say he's going to get Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. And I think that's going to – and this is, is, this is fuel to that. So he's going to show him. Um, I, I've, I've, I've had a chance to talk to Trent. His, his mental approach is on a professional level right now. So no doubt in my mind this is fuel to it. And you would know about the professional level, having played overseas for so many years and, of course, so many years with the Illini. You know what it's like to have the professional mindset. So that means a lot coming from a guy like you. Now, these past two games, as we kind of wrap up and look forward, they've been gritty. 50 points Illinois only needed to score in the 50s to get those wins against Northwestern and, and Michigan right. State. How important is it to get those gritty wins? Because you already said that, you know, an ugly win is better than a pretty loss. But, right. you know, you just got to win at any means necessary at this point. And maybe fans are a little bit worried about the offense, but you as someone who's been there, what, what is it like and, and how important is it to get those gritty wins? Maybe just for your team mindset moving forward. Well, I mean, you, you, you just have to figure out other ways to win. Cause sometimes, you know, the, the, the free throws don't drop. Sometimes foul troubles happen. Sometimes you're on protocol. Sometimes, <laughs> you know, you know, guys have con you know, concussion, you know what I mean? So it, it happens, you know what I mean? So you have to really grind it out, win those games by any means. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta take a totally different approach offensively or win it on the defensive end. So it's, it's, it's just different ways you have to be able to win these games in the big team. Cause right now, everybody is, is battling right now to get those positions and obviously trying to compete for a big 10 championship. Wisconsin, Indiana, Purdue, Northwestern all coming up. Let's start with that matchup against the Badgers. That's going to be an oh so important one for first place in the Big Ten. How do you see Illinois going about that game and how they match up with Wisconsin, who has been very, very good this year? Well, we can all expect that um, we're going to spread the floor, run out wide. Um, I think, um, obviously, feed off Kofi. Um, expect double teams early. And I think guys just have to be, you know, open man, open targets, and be ready to knock down open shots. But I think um, with with Kofi being back and hopefully Corbello, uh, I, I, I think we're going to be a pretty pretty tough matchup for anybody with their long stretch. But at the end of the day, we're playing at home, so we have to take home court. 
and the one that I have circled is that rematch with Purdue, this time in West, Ooh, West yeah. Lafayette. Indiana is going to be a fun game as well, but what do you expect the team to be about in that game? Because I imagine they're going to be looking for revenge after taking them all the way to double OT in Champaign. Well, obviously, you know, you want to win on the road, and that's one of those, those you know, those games that you, you know, you, you, you got to go in there and battle because it's not going to be easy. Obviously, it wasn't easy at home, and we lost that game in double overtime. And, um, you know, paying up in Purdue is always tough. So, um, and, and hopefully still at that time, we'll be the, we'll still be the number one team in the Big Ten. And then obviously, we'll have a target on our back, and they'll be trying to get a win as well. I'd be ashamed if I didn't mention it, but Trent Frazier against Michigan State Getting up into to your area now, uh, around the top of some Illini legends, getting into the top 10 all-time scoring in Illinois history. Just what has Trent over his five years for this Illinois program uh, proved? And what does it mean, do, do you think, to the fans to have a guy like that who stuck around and now finds himself in the top 10 scoring all-time? I mean, it means a lot. Just I think um, uh, I don't think we take Trent for granted. Um, I think he's um, um, been remarkable for the program, um, a tremendous leader. Um, you know, we all extremely proud of him. He's, he only he, he, he's, he continues to to really show what it means to to have, you know, to to, you know, to say that 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 name on the front of your jersey is way more important than the name on the back. So he's he's a he's a, 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 a prime example of what Illinois basketball is all about. Corey, you know it's rarefied air up there, so I'm sure it means a lot. And Trent has said as much that it means a lot to him as well. All right, Corey, thank you so much for joining us again on the Fast Break. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Always a pleasure, man. All right, thank you so much. We'll see you next week on the Sunday Fast Break.